With that, I would love to introduce our next speaker. So this is our final uh, morning session before we go into a short break slash networking session where you will get to meet other attendees. Our next speaker is leading the data-driven network operations with AI in Orange, a uh, telecommunication company in France uh, with 10 plus years experience in smarter networks. And she has a PhD in uh, telecommunications networks from Pierre and Marie Curie University. Please welcome the AI Empowered Network Programs Tech Lead at Orange, Imen Grida Ben Yeye. Hi, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to uh, this very exciting day on Data Centric AI. I'm very thrilled and happy to be here today. Um, and thank you uh, for the introduction. Uh, so, my presentation is on the telco use case perspective that are leading to the, let's say, the transformation of the network toward the data centric or the data driven network operation. So, this is how we are referring to this movement in the telco world. So, uh, to get started, um, why data centric driven network operation uh, in the network and in the telco domain? So, to show you this, first of all, I would like to highlight the pillars. You know, the network is what we have today in, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, in, in, to having this remote, let's say, session on remote conferences because we have worldwide interconnected equipment, interconnected internet, and this is why we are able to do, uh, to deliver services on top of the network. So the day-to-day -day life of uh, the operator is to ensure that these services are doing good quality, that the uh, services are accessible, that the customers are happy with their services, and these are delivered as they were uh, described in the uh, granted study. So our pillar for the network transformation that uh, the network was so much technology centric, we are now moving the network toward the data-driven, uh, let's say, uh, transformation, and it, it is coming also to the network uh, to the network part. So our pillar here today are the automation and AI, and here it will take into account the processes, the information that are coming from the network, from the services where we have our customer expecting the best quality, and also to have, uh, let's say, smarter services that will be context uh, following con following the context of our customers. So the three pillars that we are using here is, as I said, automation and AI, cloudification of the network data. We have uh, per day, we have more than 700 terabytes per day of data, which is only for the network part per day. So it's really huge uh, amount and volume of data. And to do, uh, to, to let's say, uh, make use of this data in the right way and make of this data enrich our management system in order to make um, uh, bring insight into the network operations, we, uh, we are relying on AI and automations. So our objective, I said, is to have greater operational effic efficiency so that we can deliver the services that we are promising. We reinvent the customer experience in order to have uh, our customers satisfied with their portfolio of services and that they can get, of course, new ones and have smarter networks, as I said, that will be following the context of the customer and uh, answering their needs and business. So this presentation is more oriented to the use cases that are in the telco world today uh, requiring the AI. And then I will zoom in the last part of the presentation on how it looks like a network data and why the data-centric AI will be a game changer for us to, to move forward and move uh, and accelerate the AI in the network. So um, let me show you what it looks like today when I talk about operation of the network. It means we are detecting failures, we are detecting incident, we are detecting um, uh, uh, customers that are impacted and that they miss, for example, their connectivity. So the operation is all the portfolio of tasks that we as operator, we ensure to make uh, the services available and resilient to our customer. So today, uh, I mean, the previous way of doing is that we had different network segments that are uh, segmented by uh, technology. So the access technology of a network, like the base station, the radio aspect, the transport, it's, for example, the IP interconnect, uh, interconnectivity, and the core network where we have the control plane and the session. So I don't want to enter into the definition of all these network uh, segments and their technology behind, but the network is technology centric. It was built like that. And to be managed correctly, we are putting in place what we are calling the OSS, the Operating Support System. And when we started the early journey of AI, uh, the mission was to enrich the OSS with 
with uh, machine learning models or with optimization models or whatever smart uh, algorithm that will enable us, for example, to ensure energy savings, to detect congestion, to identify the root cause. So it was incremental um, incremental um, enrichment of these managers, management system in order to make sure that we are controlling the network and making the services resilient and available to our customer. This approach that were not at all data centric, it was uh, technology centric. It was, as I said, segmented by network management. It was, um, we had a lots of data sources that are disparate and duplicated. So if I want, for example, to make sure that my service that is uh, built end to end is working correctly for uh, my customers, I have to take into account data from the access, from the transfers, from the core, and I have to ensure smart correlation there in order to see if my services are going okay or I have degradation or I have failures, etc. So the fact that it is segmented, it's impossible to have, uh, let's say, uh, smooth uh, uh, correlation of data and uh, and ensure this root cause identification or ensure the resiliency of the service. We also, uh, when we are working in silo with mode, we had limited compute and storage. So this was also um, complex in order to add new data sources to enrich the analysis. So it was not enabling the, um, the the improvement of the data quality. So the technology centric in the telco world were, let's say, a bottleneck toward having a data centric approach toward having better quality of data. What we are now doing, it's this is the move, the new move of the, uh, the paradigm shift or, or the transformation of the network is toward a network that is more and more software oriented. So what you can see, what you can, what you see here as network segment is now uh, in the movement to be in the cloud, cloudified, especially for the uh, access network. So we have, for example, Oran, which is an open uh, and a consortium worldwide that is uh, um, working on the uh, standardization of the new uh, radio or the new function. Uh, while taking into account all the benefit from the uh, cloudifications and the clouds, uh, the cloud, um, the cloud features. So here, the shift, as you can see, is that we will be able to collect the data cross network segment. We will still have some, uh, some, let's say, management uh, services on premises, but much of the work and much of the analysis will be on the cloud. So in order to have the, this distributed, logically distributed data lake where we will have the data available cross domain. And this data will enable us to have the end-to-end -end view in order to be sure that we are monitoring the quality of our service. We know uh, if our customer are, um, uh, say, impacted, if there is a degradation or not. We anticipate the problem from happening. And of course, we quickly put in place corrective actions if there is an incident or failure. So the take, my take here uh, to, to share you is that the data-driven operation is to overcome the side with network segment that were uh, separated by technology is to make, uh, let's say, advantage of the cloudification and all the advances in the cloud for uh, transforming the network data and uh, building insight for, uh, for the network management. And of course, uh, the possibility of uh, serving the pipelines in the cloud or serving the pipelines on the management uh, services uh, inside and uh, on, on premises. So uh, the, the important part of the slide is to say that we were technology driven and we are now moving to data driven. And with this data driven, we will be able to uh, put in place the data centric AI and improve uh, the operational aspect that we were de dealing with. So. In the next slide, I will show you um, a, a global view of, uh, of, of what I was saying in, in the previous one, but to, just to show you the, uh, the, the big differences, let's say the three main differences that are uh, ongoing. So we are, work, we are going beyond use case centric approach for AI and networks toward what if scenario, because we will have a lot of data available on the cloud. And from this data, we will be able to correlate. As I said, the network is a big graph with of interconnected um, equipment. And from on top of this equipment and network, we are building a lot of services, communication services to our customers. So the data is uh, disparate and we have a lot of, a lots of um, uh, sources of data that we need to uh, take into account to ensure data fusion, data correlation in order to be able to uh, ensure the operation of the network. The second um, important aspect is that we were um, rule-based 
It means that um, we are monitoring the network with a threshold, with uh, open which, open which, for example, we have service degradation. Uh, we have rules to say that uh, if, uh, for example, um, uh, the connectivity is, for example, uh, at night or during the day or during the summer or during holidays. So here we have threshold based also on the time period and also the events. All these rules are, as you uh, may imagine, static. But uh, today, uh, these rules are, uh, let's say, the core, uh, the core of the management system that we have. But as you can see, this is a very uh, bottleneck approach because it's static, it has to be maintained, it's time consuming, and it is not um, suitable to the dynamic aspect of the network itself. So uh, the shift that we are taking in the network operation is that we are going to more, more to the self-learning threshold and proactive detection of deviation. So instead of having the reactive mode, we wait for a, for a threshold to be uh, to be passed. And then from there, we will detect, uh, we will have a lots of alarms, we will have a lots of alerts, and then we will be in a reactive mode trying to overcome the problem and correct the problem. So the goal is to more to go more and more to proactive management to anticipate the, that, the deviation that we can have in our uh, key performance indicators. And from there, we, were, we will be able to notify our customer and also uh, to, to, uh, to correct the, um, the, the problems in the network as soon as it appears or in anticipation mode if you are able to forecast it uh, from the beginning. The, Another aspect that is also changing now in the telco world is that uh, we had the IT part, the network skills, and as I said, fragmented by network domain. The more the network is moving to the cloud and the more the teams are more hybrid, so we have the network expertise, of course, but also more data-centric skills that are uh, helping uh, the, the network expert teams to build their operation based on the data. So these two slides was were to show you that um, the network is moving from this technology approach, centric approach, to the data centric approach. And here, the data centric approach is at the level of the architecture, the level of uh, putting all the data together on the cloud so that we can build the uh, next level uh, that, that you are talking about in this, uh, in this conference is the data centric uh, to move from the models to the data centric operations and approaches. So let's go to the um, different use cases. So here I wanted to show you um, how it looks like uh, the operation in the network with AI. So this first operation, uh, this first um, use case is on the operation of the transport network. So for example, uh, it could be the IP networks. And in this IP networks, if we have a failures in the network, we can analyze the log of our equipment. We can analyze the logs of our uh, PCs. We can analyze the logs of whatever IT systems or uh, telco, uh, telco system in order to uh, to detect if uh, what is what was the problem or to anticipate the problem. So here uh, we built with um, uh, different uh, colleagues and experts in the network and experts on data science and engineering in Orange, uh, a pipeline in order to analyze these logs and make sure that we can help the operational team to identify the root cause in less than five minute detection. As you can see in this pipeline, there's, let's say, big steps that are, uh, I would say, um, quite common in different data transformation but the most important part uh, that plays a role in having uh, in having let's say identification of of the root cause is the preparation of the data is all the smart uh, parsing that we did on these uh, network uh, network logs and event in order to be able to apply uh, later several models because we were consolidating this part so we had a lots of um, uh, we put a lots of effort here in this preparation of the data before uh, pushing uh, towards the uh, the processing of uh, of the processing with machine learning and the detection of of the outliers so here it's all millions of, of network logs that were analyzed and uh, we have less noise, noisy alarms because of this um, identification and analysis of the logs and we build the uh, the uh, the pipeline on gcp which is a platform that is uh, also oriented uh, data oriented and helped us to build the pipeline quickly so in this use case the main message is that to uh, to analyze the core network low logs much of the much of the work was done in structuring this data and uh, cleaning this data so that we can build uh, build the machine learning and identify the root causes as we should be and the next uh, use case um uh, it's also on the fixed network. So in the fixed network to help the technician, the network technician to be able to um, 
to um, to to repair uh, the uh, to diagnose the problem or to repair what is the incident in the, in the network, we uh, we put in place CIA assisted field intervention intervention for smarter diagnosis, and this consists of having machine learning models that will identify the root cause and analyze all the information, so that when the technician will go to solve the problem, he has already uh, the uh, the probable problem, so that we can that he can ensure the uh, the uh, recovery actions quickly and in, in, with accuracy without, let's say, going without any information and without any assisted assisted uh, um, assisted uh, diagnosis. So the um, the uh, um, yeah. So here, sorry, I think I went too fast. Yeah, this one. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for 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 the use cases uh, I showed here, it's based on different network data. So it is for the first one, it's the network logs, the network events, and in the second one, you will have alarms, you will have uh, key performance indicators, you will have the past incident and the historical incident, and the uh, the the action point or the the most bottleneck that we were facing is how to bring all these data sources together in terms of temporality in terms of uh, spatial temporal analysis and also in terms of data quality so here it was uh, a lot of work on the data fusion data correlation of for the second one and in the first one it was more spending time on improving the data quality and cleaning the data so that you can process from it the root cause and the problem in the network so let's uh, discuss on, on, on the data-centric AI and in particular the data labeling in the network data. Um, yeah, so here, as I said in, in the previous use cases I was presenting, um, today we are having thresholds, we are having uh, timers in the network, we are having um, uh, average, for example, with respect to the latency or average with respect to the time response, and all this information are rules that we are using to be able to, uh, to to make sure that the quality of service is respected, that our KPI are in the normal mode, on, and our uh, service level objectives are maintained. So all of this, as you can imagine, are uh, static and are and are, uh, are time consuming to maintain and also are technology centric so this is for example how it looks like a network data this is uh, an example of network logs and here when you look to this data it's it's impossible to go to the millions of of lines as you can expect and also to the sequences of logs to see if this correspond to a normal behavior of my network or not and if if even when if even we spend time on the annotation this annotation is static and also expensive and slow because it will take time uh, millions of logs it's huge and also it's not even for the network expert this is hard to understand if the sequence is corresponding to a normal uh, normal uh, behavior or not we need other sources of data to be able to say that so it is slow expensive and static and this is quite common to several use cases in the network Another example, uh, so it's also about the the uh, key performance indicator. So here, for example, we have voice services or we have internet uh, mobile services. And here we have key performance indicator that we are following. And these uh, key performance indicators uh, could, um, the key performance indicators for a given service, we may have some, uh, some degradation on the service. And when we, for example, put in place anomaly detection models, and then we ask the network operator, uh, the network operational teams to annotate for us, it's difficult to, uh, to, to do this for the different shape of distribution because we don't have one KPI, we have thousands of KPI for a given service. And also going to the annotation of all these uh, points that the annual detection is building to, you know, uh, figure out how false positive uh, we are, we are detecting how false negative we're detecting. So going through this approach, it's not, um, it's not, it's not helpful and it's not easy. And uh, this is uh, to highlight that the data labeling in the network is hard and uh, the static approach of uh, that is based on the rule is not uh, simplifying, let's say, the, uh, uh, the the operational of the network. So in this, uh, in these two, um, 
in these two facets, let's say, of uh, of uh, the, the data uh, the data labeling, we are uh, we are having with uh, snorkel teams uh, trials on network data that are very complex. Uh, one is on the anomaly detection for key performance indicator, and the second one is on the uh, detection of um, uh, the classification of traffic to avoid uh, any intrusion to to put in place intrusion detection systems, for example. And we started to have really good results. So uh, let's let's do that in the next uh, in the next uh, data centric AI uh, presentation. But uh, this is promising result that we are getting because we are moving from a completely non supervised approach where we don't have the labels and the annotation is just impossible to do because there's a lots of uh, lots of lines to to go through and also lots of sources to to take into account in order to uh, in order to label. So. This brings me to the uh, conclusion of, uh, of um, my use case oriented uh, presentation that um, we have the shift on the network operation from the technocentric to the data centric. And there is the shift on the AI operations uh, from the model aspect to the data uh, centric approach in order to have more, uh, let's say, data quality and also improve the model, but while improving the data quality. And in the network, this is a must have because uh, the network data is complex, and if we don't have, let's say, the data quality, we don't prepare it, let's say, uh, quite well. It's completely different from, you know, image uh, image recognition or NLP because this domain it will include textual data, it will include time series data, it will include structured data and non-structured data, and all on the same time that we need to uh, to put them in place. So it's it's very hard, uh, very hard and very rich uh, domain where the AI is expected to uh, to shift from the static and rule based toward the pattern. Uh, detection with, of course, lots of focus on the data. So our uh, our uh, focus is now is on the uh, data labeling. This is a problem that is coming to several use cases, and we are uh, exploring the best way to have this automated and put in place and also cross domain, as I said. But also in the network data, we have to put in place, you know, the uh, the the, um, the uh, detection of bias because the network data it's also about our connectivity, about the customers, about the service. So we need to have, let's say, to put it in the right way uh, to build the feature matrix with respect to the uh, to, uh, to 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 the paradigm of responsible AI engineering. So this give me uh, conclude my uh, my talk and uh, thank you. If you have any questions. Thank you so much, Yumen. That was such a wonderful presentation. Uh, learned a lot about network data. I've personally been working with network data for the first time recently. And just the scale that you work with, it's, it's so large, I guess, because a lot of our uh, attendees slash even us, like mostly on text, but with network, uh, even for analysts or security analysts, it's really hard to label and constantly right. changing new right. attack types. So um, we have lots of questions, exciting questions in the chat. I guess George uh, just joined. so. Uh, do you mind talking just a little bit about like what is network data or what are some of the characteristics of network data just for people who may have joined late? Yeah, so uh, in the network data, we have um, sources of data like uh, trouble ticket. So the trouble ticket is where we will uh, define, I mean, where we will, let's say, sorry, uh, put, uh, put the information about the incident, about, uh, let's say, the time to repair for this incident, uh, the level of impact, you know, it's, it's a critical incident, it's major, it's informative. So we put all the levels that are required to know. We also put in place the root cause because when you have an incident, you have a problem, but you don't know what the problem is. So you have lots of columns with the uh, ID of the incident, uh, the time to repair, the possible time to repair, the severity, the description of the problem that were uh, outputted. And then you will have the um, the uh, the uh, the root cause once it is identified. So it is a live data, this trouble ticket, that cover all the cycle of the incident management. So this is one type of data. So it is a structured data, but in this structured data, you will have a, a column with a textual data. So you will have, uh, let's say, uh, categorical data with respect to the severity, but you will have to use text and NLP uh, techniques for the, 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 um, uh, the, the analysis of the description of the incident. So it's a combination all the time, just for one source of data. Another source of data is the alarms, and the alarms is um, is all what the equipment are, let's say, uh, um, are generating when there is a problem. And here again, you will have the severity, you will have 
the equipment ID, you will have the uh, the timestamp. So it's, it's time time series data, and the alarms are real time, uh, uh, real time uh, generated and also collected. And this is also structured data with columns that uh, could have these categorical features with the severity, but also uh, the spatiotemporal aspect because you have the timestamp and you have the ge geographical location of where the problem or, or from where the alarm is coming. And the major uh, common uh, type of network data is the what we call key performance indicators. So it's the uh, it is of uh, time series uh, type, and the time series type here it's um, it, it corresponds to, for example, the the number of calls uh, on the, on a given service. For example, the voice uh, the voice on four G or three G. So you will have the number of calls. You will have the number of successful calls or the number of faded calls. So you will have lots of statistics on different uh, on different uh, key performance indicator that are standardize it today. Uh, so we have a different standard working on the KPIs for the different services. And from these, uh, let's say, time series uh, type of data, we can build, uh, for example, forecasting, we can build annual detection or classification of these uh, of these uh, network uh, key performance indicators. So if I summarize, you have the trouble ticket, you have the alarms, you have the key performance indicator. Uh, majorly, it's a structured data with uh, timestamp and spatiotemporal as aspect. And with respect to the logs, you know, the syslogs that we can have in any IT system, it's more non-structured data that we need to clean and prepare to, uh, to move forward. So, yeah, thank you for, for outlining that, Iman. I think network data is a, is a new field for, or at least for a lot of us here in, in the data science field. And it, it's exciting yeah. to see it like becoming more prevalent. Um, and thank you for outlining those. And just to add to that, yeah, you might have, you know, all of the use cases that Iman mentioned or any cybersecurity use cases where you're trying to also do like right. attack or threat detection. You also have network data, IP port information from, from different machines. Um, just to add to all of this, um, George had a follow-up question that these are all labeled data, is it not? So uh, usually, or, or is it? Uh, yeah, the, the problem is that we could, we could say that this data is labeled because, I mean, from 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 an external point of view, we say, okay, we have the indicators, we have the failure, we know the incident, so we are able to label the data. This is the theoretical view. But in reality, um, yeah, in reality, you will have the key performance indicator, as I said, coming from, uh, I mean, built, built on top of several equipment, so it's not only one KPI, but thousands of these KPIs. And then you have the alarms. The alarms will be also coming from different equipment that you have to correlate. And then you have the incident management where you will declare the trouble ticket. When you would like to bring all of this work together, it's difficult to have first the uh, common, you know, the common, uh, I would not say the ID, but the common point that will bring all of this together because sometimes you have a delay between the alarms and the trouble ticket, uh, the incident detection, and sometimes you will not have all, let's say, the KPI that you need to know because uh, the ones that will really lead you to identify the root cause are not are not taken into account. So it's difficult to uh, to label. So we will say that we are in um, usually in in in, uh, in um, let's say. Uh, uh, in a noisy label labeling because we can label but we are not sure if this really uh, the right labels we are in uh, in use cases with partial labeling so we are we have the ground truth but not not for all the data and right. for major cases we don't have the label because the mapping is quite difficult that makes sense that makes sense thank you for outlining that Iman. and also we've seen you know like especially for cybersecurity or network data, you have to use your own network. You know, you, you can't use other people's data sets generally because it doesn't exactly. generally, you definitely have to do it in-house. So, exactly. exactly. yeah, and lo lots and, of- And also I would like to add that in the network, I mean, maybe for, com for computer vision, for NLP, there is open data that makes the innovation easy in these, in these domains. But for the network, uh, uh, we cannot put the data public. It's not our data. It's the, the right. network service and customer data. So it's really with all this privacy aspect, the innovation is, I would like, it's slower than in the computer vision and the NLPs also. That makes sense. That makes sense. Let's take a next question from Medula. Uh, she asks, is the movement restricted to network ops or also in the way that traffic is perceived and used? Uh, that is in the analysis of the data seen on the wire itself in terms of core traffic KPIs. 
Um, I'm not sure I get the question, but yes, the movement, it's not only on the network operation. It's also for the traffic, if I get it, for the traffic analysis uh, or the, you know, the capacity planning of, 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 uh, of, um, of the network for the FTTH, as I said, so for the fixed and wired networks. Yes, it is, it is a movement not centric to the mobile, but also for all the network segment, because as I said, it is a movement toward uh, the, the cloudification of network function. Uh, so it is, it is, it is widely... Uh, widely um, a paradigm shift in the network and uh, for the service platforms for the traffic level so it is it is more wider than the mobile part yeah makes sense and then we have a question on for from set i think that's more directed towards the snorkel team uh so we will have the snorkel team follow up there um and with that thank you so much Umen, for taking the time and for teaching us so much about network oh, data and data-centric approaches there thank you